The only real hope and change you'll ever get is from God. It's going to come from the Lord or it's not going to come at all. It's going to come when you admit that you can't do it and that you've got to have His help. There are some battles you have no idea that they occurred and God fought for you. You know you have to bless the Lord. You know you are going to heaven one day. That alone is more than enough to make you bless the Lord. So many people fear death. They don't know what comes after this life. But you have the assurance in Christ Jesus that you are going to heaven. That is something you should bless the Lord about. Psalm 103 verse 1 Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. King David was telling his soul to bless the Lord. He was calling unto his heart and all that is there. For King David to make such a statement like this, he must have known what was in his heart. He was sure of good things in there. He couldn't say a statement like this if his heart was full of filth, unrighteousness and inequity. The truth is, God is not interested in the outward appearance. God is not interested in the face people put on to show other people that they are holy. God is not interested in the overused Christian slogans and the religious catchphrases people shout out. God is interested in the heart of an individual. God is interested in the things which cannot be seen with the naked eye. Therefore, David said all that is in me, that is what God is interested in, all that is within you. 1 Samuel 16 verse 7 But the Lord said unto Samuel, Look not on his countenance or on the height of his stature, because I have refused him. For the Lord seeth not as man seeth. For man looketh on the outward appearance, but the Lord looketh on the heart. I will mention the things that you need to get rid of in you if you want all that is within you to bless the Lord and it will be accepted by the Lord. Number one, pride. Pride is a feeling that occurs in different ways. Pride makes you feel you don't need anyone to either help you or tell you things that you need to do that can be of help to your life. Pride is a feeling that you don't have to submit to anyone. Pride in you will never bless God. Pride itself is poisonous. This may be shocking to you, but it is the truth. The very essence of pride is Satan. Pride is an arrogant being. It is a proud spirit. It doesn't accept anything from anyone. It feels it has everything under control. And a perfect example of pride is prayerlessness. Prayerlessness is saying that Jesus, when he was on this earth, had to pray. But I don't. 1 Peter 5 verse 5 Likewise, ye younger, submit yourselves unto the elder. Yea, all of you be subject one to another, and be clothed with humility. For God resisteth the proud, and giveth grace to the humble. You cannot bless God if you are proud, because God is resisting you. Number two, jealousy. First of all, there is something I need to clear about jealousy. You may be wondering if jealousy is a sin or not, because God called himself a jealous God. Exodus 20 verse 6, Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them, nor serve them, for I, the Lord, thy God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me. If God calls himself a jealous God, can't we also be jealous? When you check the meaning of jealousy, you will see that it means to be protective of one's right or to be protective of someone or something. I call this positive jealousy. When God called himself a jealous God, it means he reserves the right to be the only God. There should be no one else called God. And that is true. Only God is God. 
only he deserves to be worshipped. The kind of jealousy that must not be found in you is that which is associated with hatred and envy. You should not envy other people for what they have. You should not hate people because they are succeeding. If you looked at a secular definition of coveting, it means to have a longing for or strong desire for something and even someone else. It is nearly like lusting in the heart for someone's spouse, job, car, home, social status, or anything else of value. That is close to stealing in the heart. Like Jesus said, lusting after someone is adultery of the heart. Of all the Ten Commandments, this is the only one that you cannot tell if someone is breaking it or not. Only God knows that. That feeling will push you to covet, and to be covetous is a sin. That kind of jealousy cannot bless the Lord. Number three, anger. It is normal to get angry. It is part of the scope of human emotion. We cannot do away with that, but if that anger gets the best of you, if it starts to control you, it will make you sin, and God cannot behold sin. Anger in you will not bless the Lord. Ephesians 4 verse 26 Be ye angry, and sin not. Let not the sun go down upon your wrath. Let go of that anger. Realistically speaking, do you think you can bless the Lord when you are angry at your wife? But she did this. She did that. Forgive her. Do you think you can say, let all that is within me bless his holy name? If you are angry at your spouse, forgive them. You bless the Lord with all that is within you. When you haven't spoken to your spouse for days or weeks, forgive them. How on earth can you expect to say, bless the Lord with all that is within me, when you are harboring anger towards people? Forgive anyone who has angered you. What is more important to you? Your relationship with the Lord or being angry at someone? Don't forgive them because they said sorry or they deserve your forgiveness. Forgive them because God told you to forgive them. God demands forgiveness. God requires forgiveness. And it is not to benefit the people that have wronged you. It is to benefit you. Matthew 18 verse 21 and 22 Then came Peter to him and said, Lord, how oft shall my brother sin against me and I forgive him? Till seven times Jesus saith unto him, I say not unto thee, until seven times, but until seventy times seven. You can't bless God with a heart full of anger. Forgive. Be quick to forgive. Whoever you are angry at right now, let it go. Go talk to them. Tell them you forgive them and you are sorry for the part you had to play. Because the truth be told, very rarely in disagreements is only one party in the wrong. You could be wrong too. Number four, deceit. Deceit is not of God. Deceit is a lie. It is an act of telling lies. Deceit is of the devil. There is no way around this. If you are full of deceit, if lies run in your heart, these will not bless the Lord. The things of the devil can never bless the Lord. 2 Corinthians 6 verse 14b for what fellowship hath righteousness with unrighteousness? And what communion hath light with darkness? Look into your life. Check it very closely. Have you allowed lies and deceit to be your friend? Have you accepted them in your heart that they have become part of you? We all shout we don't want to be of the devil. We don't want to be recognized with the devil. We claim to be children of light. The children of God but we still tell lies conveniently. You are not of God. John 8 verse 44 Ye are of your father the devil, and the lusts of your father ye will do. He was a murderer from the beginning, and abode not in the truth, because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own. For he is a liar, 
and the father of it. A child of the devil cannot exalt God. Make it a point to be an honest and upright man or woman of God. Notice also in the last days perilous times shall come, for men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers. It takes the grace of God to change us, folks. How can you be saved if you're not willing to repent? And the Lord Jesus Christ said, except you repent, you shall all likewise perish.